Hi there, this is Fianna Adora. I'm a content creator in Second Life. Um, I've been in Second Life with my brand Enchant 3D since about 2007. Uh, I am also a student and volunteer at the Ditko University in Second Life. I've been studying there for about seven months, taking a variety of courses in Blender and other content creation software specific to Second Life. Um, more recently, we've been uh, taking uh, Marvelous Designer classes, which I'm going to demonstrate a little bit for you today. Um, Haven's currently teaching a workflow on converting tries to quads as part of the process for uh, preparing uh, Marvelous Designer models for um, import into Second Life. Um, and uh, I don't have Maya and I won't be able to afford Maya anytime in the near future, but I do have ZBrush and ZBrush has a similar tool um, that you can use for uh, doing that. Uh, and I'm going to show you my workflow for that today. So we're going to start off by going pattern, grid, activate grid to make the grid a little snappy. I'm going to use the edit polygon tool and start about here. I'm going to draw out the panel for my skirt one half of it, and I'm going to draw out a second panel for my ruffle. I'm going to switch to the Edit Pattern tool, right click, unfold, select this line, right click, unfold. I'm going to click and drag in the canvas area, not over a pattern piece. Drag out a selection box, release to select, and press delete to remove the points. I'm going to zoom out and pan over a little bit. Use the Pattern Transform tool. I'm going to shift click both of them, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and hold shift to constrain it on this axis, and left click to drop it. I'm going to press the Synchronize tool, and you can see that my panels appear there. Now, if you can imagine that this was the front of the fabric, I'd want to sew this edge to this edge. And then this edge, you can imagine, would wrap around behind the avatar and reattach on this side. So that's how we're going to sew it in the pattern window. I'm going to choose the Sewing Segment tool. I'm going to sew the inside edges, and I'm going to take the far right edge and sew it over to the far left edge. And again here, I'm going to click the inside edges. I'm going to take the far right edge and sew it over to the far left edge. And then finally, I'm going to sew the skirt to the ruffle. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the Pattern Transform tool. I'm going to select all four pieces of my pattern. Um, now I want to move it away from the avatar, but I don't like this gizmo. So I'm going to go up to Environment, Gizmo, World Coordinate Gizmo, and that gives me a gizmo that's much more like the one we have in Second Life. I'm going to move these pattern pieces away. I'm going to choose show arrangement points. Now I want to know that these arrangement points don't come with the Second Life avatar. Um, you have to create them or import them in um, from another file source. Um, Haven is teaching a uh, Marvelous Designer setup class where you can learn all about that so I definitely recommend uh, you looking it up in the class schedule as well as um, a variety of other Marvelous Designer techniques courses and project courses are available um, ongoing all the time. And so now what I want to do is I want to choose my Pattern Transform tool, and I'm going to select my front ruffle, and I'm going to want to click this dot because it's the last dot before these two split into pairs, or into left and right. I'm going to click that dot there, select the back ruffle piece, and I'm going to pick the same dot on the opposite side. So they line up. In the pattern window, I'm going to shift click so that I have them both selected, and then I'm going to use the gizmo to pull them down to about mid thigh. I'm going to grab the front panel piece, and I'm going to choose the dot in the very central in the in the center kind of midsection here, because it's a bit of a high-waisted skirt. Same thing with the back panel piece, and I'm going to choose the equivalent dot on the back side. Now I think that I'm going to pull the ruffle up a little bit so it's a little closer. Oops, I accidentally rotated it there. I'll try that again. Pull that up. And that looks ready. I'm going to turn off my arrangement points because I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to press the simulate button. And voila, we have a very nice simple ruffle skirt. So now I want to go to file, export OBJ, and I'm going to call my file skirt press save and then the export OBJ window is going to open up. 
you're going to see here that you're going to have your four pattern pieces and you're also going to have your avatar shape. I'm going to get you to uncheck avatar shape. You're going to leave single object selected. You're going to leave weld selected. You're going to leave thin selected, but you're going to check the UV coordinates button. Under scale, I want you to change the scale from millimeters to meters. And then you're just going to press OK. And that's it for Marvelous Designer. Our next step is in ZBrush. Okay, so now we're in ZBrush. I'm going to press the um, comma to remove the light box. I'm going to select Import. And it's going to open up in your Export Import directory for Pixelogic. Uh, I created a shortcut here to my tutorial directory because I'm lazy, but normally you would use this uh, area to browse to where you kept your skirt.obj file that you exported out of Marvelous Designer. I'm going to select my skirt file and I'm going to press open. It's going to show up as my default tool in my tool window here. I'm going to click and drag it out on the canvas. I'm going to press T or hit this key, this button at the top here to put it into edit mode. I'm going to press frame and scale just to center it so that I can see it well. I'm going to turn on the draw polyframe button. What that's going to do, it's going to show me my mesh a little bit better. And as you can see, when it came out of Marvelous Designer, it was all made of tries. We're going to go over to the UV map panel. And you can see I've got this delete UV button here. So this lets me know that I, a UV map came in with this model. I'm going to toggle this Morph UV button. I'm just going to frame and scale this a little bit. And as you can see, what it did is it flattened out our mesh into its UVs. And uh, you can see that they're almost identical to the panels um, that we created in Marvelous Designer, the pattern pieces, um, except that they're, they appear inverted. Um, so I'm going to toggle this Morph UV button again to get back into our 3D mode. And I'm going to frame and scale again. I'm going to close the UV map box and I'm going to go up to poly groups. So I know that there are UVs um, that came in with this model. So this auto groups with UV button is going to create a group for every island it finds in your UV map. So I'm going to press that button and it went by really, really quickly. I'm going to rotate and hold shift to constrain on an axis. And as you can see, it created four groups um, indicated by the colors here, pink, purple, green, and orange for our uh, four islands of the UV map. Um, we're going to use these in a minute when we Z remesh and a little bit later um, when we re-UV map. So I'm going to rotate around and I'm going to go back up to geometry and then there's another panel in here called Z remesher. Um, this is the panel we're going to use to remesh this. Um, these buttons here, um, only one or the other can be selected but we're going to choose the one that says freeze groups border. And if I rotate around here, what it's going to do, it's going to try and keep these borders intact. Target polygon count, um, it's it's in thousands, so it would be about 5,000. This adaptive button means keep this number flexible. I actually think when we remesh this, the polygon counts will be much less than 5,000. Um, the adaptive size um, has to do with how square your quads are going to be. So if it's at zero, they're going to be really, really square. But if it's at 100, they would be more rectangular in shape. But um, the result of, the, of that is that you're going to end up with a lot more geometry. Um, curve strength is how closely it follows the curves of your mesh. Um, in that instance, uh, again, if it's at zero, it's going to be pretty loosely following it. And if it's at 100, it's going to follow it really tightly. But then again, you're going to end up with more geometry. We're just going to leave these all the defaults for now. Uh, you can certainly come in and play with them and uh, try and see what you can do with your mesh. Um, and we're going to press the Z Remesher button. I'm going to go across the top here. And voila, we have uh, new geometry and you can see it's all made up of quads. You may find the occasional try here and there but for the most part, like right here, but for the most part it does a pretty good job um, with geometry. It'll be a lot easier to rig um, uh, in, in Blender. Um, now we're gonna go take a look at our UV map. Oops. And as you can see, uh oh, our UV map is gone. I can't delete it anymore. It was obliterated by the uh, remeshing process. So, but now if I rotate, I just wanted you to take a note here on the side. If you look, you can still see a color difference in these four panels. So what happened was even though the Z remesh process wiped out our UV map, it actually kept the poly groups. So that's going to come in handy. We're going to go up to Z plugin. UV Master, and this is kind of a funny menu, so you got to be careful with it, but uh, slide it down. Uh, as you can see in this UV Master button, there's a checkbox here, a button for polygroups. So I'm going to press that, 
I'm going to press unwrap. And it just zipped across the top of the screen there. You didn't see much happen, but we're going to go back into the Z plugin menu. And then there's going to be this flatten button. You're going to press flatten. And very much like the uh, the Morph UV button, it flattened it out into our UVs for us. And as you can see, uh, even though the uh, orientation maybe isn't ideal, um, these are very nice, uh, very nice islands that we can work with pretty easily in Blender. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go back here and press Unflatten to return to my 3D mode. And I'm going to choose Export, and I'm going to call it Skirt Remeshed .obj. And that's it for ZBrush. We'll see you next in Blender. Okay, so now we're in Blender. I've got my Second Life Avstar character loaded here, and I'm in Front Ortho View. I'm going to go to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ, and I'm going to browse to where I saved my skirt underscore remesh dot OBJ. I'm going to select it and I'm going to scroll down here and look at the import OBJ panel. I'm going to uncheck this group. If I left this group checked, the four poly groups that we created in ZBrush would be honored and it would import it as four separate objects. This may come in handy sometimes uh, if you want to uh, hand group um, your meshes and then uh, set their UVs uh, in a certain way. So keep that in mind that you could use that in, in certain circumstances. But for right now, I just really want um, one welded object. So I'm going to uncheck that and press Import OBJ. And as you can see, it brought the skirt in, fitted perfectly to our Second Life Avastar, um, as we uh, pretty much as we designed it in uh, Marvelous Designer. Uh, while I'm in Object Mode, I'm going to select it. I'm going to just press Smooth so you can take a look at how it looks with the Smooth on. And then we're going to switch it into Edit Mode. You can take a look at the mesh. And we're going to switch it to the UV image editor. I'm going to drag out a second window and I'm going to switch this one back to 3D view and just because I'm going to want access to this panel in a little bit. I'm going to hover my mouse in the UV area. I'm going to press A on my keyboard to select all and I'm going to press Control P to pack. Now down here in this panel for pack islands, I'm going to set the margin to 0 0.06, which is the default we use for Second Life. And usually when I work with my textures, I like to work with them in a kind of a top-down um, pattern, you know, the same way you're your material would go if you're looking at it operating in 3D view. So I'm going to press R for rotate, negative 90, and I'm going to click to accept it. I'm going to press G on my keyboard for grab and press Y to constrain to the Y axis and move it up until it until the margins at the top and bottom are about even. And I'd say that looks pretty close. And so now if I put a, you know, a texture uh, behind here, um, the grain will be going the same way for all the pieces. Um, with this still selected, I'm going to go to UVs, Seams from Islands, and if I rotate my 3D window, you can see now that it's marked seams like you would if you were creating uh, uh, this mesh yourself in Blender. Um, and as well, you, know, you can see where your seam lines are going to be. Um, I'm going to switch this one back to 3D view, and I'm going to cover this guy back up so that I just have the one window. So now you can do um, all the things uh, that you would normally do in Blender with your mesh. You know, you can add more detail. Um, you can use the um, uh, the uh, proportional editing tool to make changes to your ruffle. Um, you know, uh, texture it, um, weight paint and rig it, um, and get it ready for import into Second Life. Um, uh, there's lots of uh, great classes ongoing at the Ditko University. Um, in all of these subjects, as well as other softwares, including uh, obviously Marvelous Designer. Um, you know, I encourage you to check out their website at theditgouniversity.wordpress.com. Um, there's a class schedule there you can take a look at. Um, as well, there's an in-world group that you can join. Um, so, you know, come on down, take a class, learn something new. Um, the Ditko University runs on a donation basis, and uh, they have ongoing SIM costs. Uh, Haven spends a lot of time in-world teaching these classes, so um, please give generously. Uh, we really appreciate everything she does for us to, uh, you know, let us learn to make really cool stuff for Second Life. So uh, I hope you had a good time today and learned something as well, and uh, happy meshing.